on my blog there is a pattern for a knitted charger hanging thingy and parts of that might be a little bit difficult and therefore I wanted to show you those in this video. So let's go do that! You can of course find the link to the pattern in the description and you should print one out if you want to follow along. It has the diagram and a guide for the cardboard cutout that we're going to use for the handle. First I want to show you how to cast on and it, this is going to be a little bit different. First just take your two needles, I am using circular needles. And put the yarn over the the one of the needles and then just wrap the tail thread around it a few times. Now go in just like you would if you do a normal cast on, meaning your thumb and your index finger go into the two threads and then you then you tilt your hand back like that. Now the important thing here is to remember that the back needle picks up from the thumb like this and the front needle picks up from the index finger. On the index finger you go over the thread, on the thumb you go under. So from the inside here and then from the outside here. You just continue on until you have the number of stitches that you need. And in the pattern I give you, I think it's something like 36 and it's 36 on each needle. Meaning that if you just count every other time you wrap the needle, you're going to have the correct number if you just count to 36. So when you're done with that, just wrap the tail thread around the other thread, the main thread, a few times to make sure that you have a handle on the last loop. Otherwise it has a tendency to slip off the needle, especially if you're not used to this method. And I'm also holding it right now. Now to go into magic loop, just pull out the needle that is facing towards you. And you're going to work from the other needle and the first half here, you're just going to knit all of the stitches. And when you're done, you're going to release the, uh, the needle that you had in your hand over here and turn the work. And then you're going to put the needle that you just worked from. It, before this needle here, was in my right hand and the back needle that is sticking out a little bit right now was in my left hand. And you want to now switch the two of them. So the needle here that is in front, I need to work onto that and I need to work from the needle that I just pushed back into the the stitches. You can also see it that it's the the needle that you want to have in your right hand working is the one where the thread is coming from. Now on the other needle, unfortunately all of the stitches are twisted. That's just the way we cast them on. So we need to knit all of these stitches twisted. So basically through the back loop. It's, it's not a lot harder than normal knitting. I actually, when I started, when I learned how to knit, so this would be wrong, right? but this would be right. When I started learning how to knit, I actually um, knitted through the back loop exclusively because I thought it was easier to actually get into the the stitch. So personally, personally, I, I think this is, <laughs> this is a little easier, but I completely understand if you're a beginner and all you can do is actually knit and then this will be a little bit of a challenge, but I'm sure you're, you're up for it. Now if you follow the diagram that I have laid out for you, this is how your front is going to look and your back should just be plain stuck knit stitch. So you'll basically just be looking at your knit stitches. I put this marker here so that I, when I'm working around I'll know when I'm back to the beginning, otherwise you, you sometimes you'll lose track of where you are. 
especially with the magic loop knitting because you're adjusting so much that sometimes it's just a little bit difficult to figure out when you've gone a full full round. So now I want to bind off all of the stitches but only on the front and I am doing it with a crochet hook. You can do it in whatever method you want. This for me is just a little bit easier because it gives... no it's not easier, it's better because it's it's more stretchy and I want that that ribbing on the front to be really stretchy. So what I'm doing is I am just knitting two or in pattern I am working the next stitch so like this, right? This was a purl so I'm purling that. Then I yarn over and pull through those two stitches. I think mainly this method is easier for me because I crochet so much but if you're more of a knitter and you just want to bind them off normally, that will be completely fine too. I actually ended up running a elastic thread through these stitches anyway, so it doesn't really... Well, it does matter. There's a little bit more stretch to it, but it, it wasn't in the way that I wanted to. I wanted it to, to stretch inwards and this stitch actually makes, them, makes it stretch outwards. Like you can stretch it more, it can become bigger, but it's not like it's going to push in more, which is what I wanted. When you're done with all of them, it's going to hopefully look a little bit like this. And I actually really like the top that this stitch gives. It gives a very finished sort of bind off. Where a normal bind off has a, a, tem a tendency to be a little bit of a twisted braid, if that makes sense. Now we need to we need to actually take care of this loop before we move on. If we just knit with the, the thread now, we're going to have a problem. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting this stitch on the other needle and then I am knitting two together. So basically this stitch on the front the stitch on the front is from the bind off row and the other stitch is the first stitch of the back of the work. And I'll just knit two together. I'm really sorry I'm so close to the camera. I, I lost the cord so I can't watch it on a different screen now and it's really difficult to actually film. So I'm I'm really sorry there are so many of these clips that are really blurry but I'm I'm trying. <laughs> so from here on just work in stockinette as the pattern tells you and I will be back to show you how to do the holes that we need in order to put the um, the adapter, I think it is, through. So now I'm at the, the hole and I have knitted the first 10 stitches over here and then I've started to bind off. And I'm just using a regular bind off, or at least this was the regular bind off that I learned back when I learned how to knit. So that was 10 and then I've started to bind off. And the, the bind off is basically you knit the next stitch. And then you pass the first stitch over the newly knitted stitch. And this is what gives you sort of the sideways braid. Which I'm not I'm not very happy with it, but it's okay and it doesn't it doesn't add bulk. I like this bind off because it doesn't add bulk and that I think is the only thing that really saves it. Otherwise I really don't like the way that it, it flips forward. You will bind off until you have 10 stitches left, meaning that you have ten, 9 stitches on the the one needle and one on the other. So I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 9 and then 10. And then I'm just going to knit the remaining stitches. And turn and now I just need to fill this gap that I have now made. And you'll see also that I've started working back and forth rather than in the round. So we actually have a lot of pearl rows now.
purl the first 10 stitches and now we are missing 16 in the middle because we have 10 on one needle and 10 on the other needle. So you can do whatever make one you want as long as it's one that only uses the working thread. You can't use a tail thread for this. So what I do is I actually tat. If that means anything to you, I'm actually doing the first knot in tatting. That is my preferred make one method. And what you do is you grab it. Oh, I'll show you. You grab the needle, the the uh, the yarn, sorry, and then you go from the top over. No, from the back. Sorry, you go from the back. You pull up the loop, and then with the needle, you go underneath the thread on your index finger. So from the back to the front, and then you pull up a loop, and then from the 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 bottom you go up and you catch a loop there. And I think this is also called a half hitch knot. It just gives you a loop and a little bit of a knot underneath it. And of course, if we did, oh, I'll actually try that. I haven't tried that, but I I will try to actually do real tatting stitches. I'll see what it looks like when you when you knit into that. So when you've done 16, just purl the rest and you should be back up to the same number of stitches on your on your row. So here we are. And from now on, again, we're just going to work back and forth in stockinette stitch. So you will knit all the stitches on the right side and purl all of the stitches on the wrong side until you have to make another hole. And we're doing this because we want to, to stabilize this hole a little bit. If we just leave it like this, it's going to be very floppy. And other and we also we will be looking at the wrong side when we have it hung. And we really don't want to do that. Or it's it's not that bad, but I, I I would prefer looking at the at the right side. And therefore Therefore I'll just continue knitting until I can flip it down and I'll be looking at the right side. I'm just testing if my phone will fit. Of course, I, I kind of knew it would, but I'm just showing you that this is my enormous phone. I think it's the same size as an iPhone 6 or something. The biggest iPhone there is. I'm not completely sure what that would be, but I'm I'm quite sure that my phone is the same size. So I think this should fit any size of phone. I also I make it, made it a little bit bigger than the phone is actually because I wanted the cord to fit in there too. Now, as you can see, I actually did the whole pattern, the lace thingy on the back too. You don't have to do that and the pattern does not specify that. But if you want to, it's just following the diagram for the back too. And now what we need to do is just to fold this down and sew it together. And you should start, of course, by folding it right side to right side. But I'll just show you what it's going to look like when we're done. It will look, hopefully, <laughs> something like this. <clears throat> and you'll notice also that the flap is a little bit, bit bigger or longer on the front than it is on the back. And you should... Just take note of how much longer when you're doing this. But as I said, fold it down right side to right side. So you should be looking at the wrong side. And I just left my myself a long tail after I finished. So there'll be one less end to work in at the end. I am also pinning down the, the knitting around the hole just to make sure that I'm not sort of skewing the the piece while I am I am sewing it together I'll just try to make sure that I'll that I'll sew it together so that the hole will still work when I'm done and of course again notice that the flap here is a little bit longer so 
you won't <clears throat> sew it to the exact place where the, the little pockets for the phone start, you'll sew it a little bit over that and have a little bit of a flap underneath it. And the way I sew it together is just putting the needle through and pulling it through. I, I wish I had some sort of amazing <laughs> sewing technique that would make this look awesome, but I'm I I think this this looks pretty nice and it's it's pretty simple. But of course if you have some some amazing way of doing this do that and let me know how you did it so that I can learn. <laughs> Yeah, so now I'll just sew the other side up too and then flip it around. Do not do anything to the hole yet. It would be a little bit of a disaster if you sewed it together now. So now I have sewn it and there's a little bit of a overhang on both sides. And I can flip this right side out. And we'll deal with the hole now. So. As I said on my blog, there is a pattern that you can print out and you can use this guide to cut out this. And I just doubled the cardboard. It's completely up to you how much you want to use. I initially wanted to use some plastic from a shampoo bottle, but I ended up just using this because it was kind of the right color and the shampoo bottle was not. But if you want to, to use some plastic instead, that's completely fine. I just used this cardboard because it was black and I just used this to to make the shape. Um and yeah. But if you print the guide out and cut it out from that, that should be fine too. If you do make it yourself, just make sure it's about ten centimeters long. So here we go, I have the two of those. And I'm just stuffing them into to the top here. And now what I'm going to do is just to sew it together with a needle and some yarn. There's really nothing to that. I try to, at this point, only sew through the the bottom loop on the front and the inside loop on the back, and that gave me a little bit of a ridge, which I actually think looks quite, kinda nice. So when you look inside of it now, you'll have this cardboard sticking out. I'm not actually working into the cardboard, I just think I should perhaps mention that. I'm just sewing around it. So down here again I have some yarn and I'm just going to sew the the seam that I got onto the back side of the pocket. And I actually really like the result of this. So basically what you do is you go through one of these little pearl bumps and then you go up through one part of the stitch. If I can hit it. <laughs> Just go up through one, one loop of the, the stitch on the seam. And you don't have to do every stitch, you could just do every second or every third, it doesn't have to take forever, but I, I do think this this actually looks surprisingly good for the amount of effort you're going to put into it. And you shouldn't really be able to see it on the back. Not that it matters, I mean it's going to be against the wall, but you know, want to make pretty things.
So you're just going to sew this the entire way, and when you're done, you're really done with all of it. So if you do happen to make this, I would love to see it. You can share it with me on my blog. And otherwise, I just... Yeah, I am I'm glad you watched till this point. <laughs> if you want to see me make a crocheted wor version, I don't know, leave me a comment saying that. I'm not completely sure I want to do a crocheted one, but if you want me to, I will make a pattern 